I just read about this fascinating new material design developed by Psy Agents. Have you heard about it? Ah, you're talking about the integration of silk and dandelion pigments, right? It's quite an intriguing development. Yes, combining silk with pigments from dandelions to create new biomaterials. How exactly does that work? Well, let's start with silk. Silk is a natural protein fiber produced by silkworms. It's remarkable because it's incredibly strong and flexible. Did you know that pound for pound, silk can be as strong as steel? Really? I had no idea silk was that strong. Absolutely. Silk's strength comes from its hierarchical structure. At the molecular level, it's made up of fibroin proteins that form beta sheet structures. These structures stack together, creating fibers with exceptional tensile strength and elasticity. So silk's natural structure gives it these properties. How do dandelion pigments fit into all of this? Excellent question. Dandelions, often considered pesky weeds, are actually rich in bioactive compounds. Among these are pigments like luteolin and taraxacum, which have unique optical properties. These pigments can absorb and reflect light in interesting ways. So by integrating these pigments into silk, we can create materials with new optical properties? Exactly. The idea is to incorporate dandelion-derived pigments into the silk matrix at the nanoscale level. This integration can lead to structural coloration, a phenomenon where color arises not from chemical pigments, but from the material's nanostructure interfering with light. Like how butterfly wings or peacock feathers show vibrant colors? Yes, precisely. Those colors are due to the micro and nanoscale structures that manipulate light. By replicating similar structures in our material, we can achieve vibrant colors without synthetic dyes. That's amazing. But how do they combine the silk and pigments without damaging their properties? This is where low temperature processing comes into play. Biological materials like silk proteins are sensitive to high temperatures, which can denature them and degrade their properties. By processing at temperatures below 50 degrees Celsius, we preserve the structural integrity of both the silk and the pigments. I see. So low temperature processing helps maintain the material's properties. Does it also save energy? Indeed, it does. Traditional high temperature processes are energy intensive. By utilizing low temperature methods, we not only protect the materials, but also reduce energy consumption by up to 30% compared to conventional silk production. That's quite significant. But how do they achieve the integration at the nanoscale level? It involves leveraging the natural multi-scale organization of silk. Silk fibers naturally organize themselves hierarchically from the molecular level up to the macroscopic level. By introducing the dandelion pigments into the silk solution, they can self-assemble, guided by the silk structure. So the silk acts like a scaffold, directing how the pigments align themselves. That's a good way to put it. The silk's nanofibrils provide a template for the pigments to arrange themselves. Through non-covalent interactions like hydrogen bonding and van der Waals forces, the pigments integrate seamlessly into the silk matrix. And this leads to materials with enhanced properties. Yes. The resulting composite material exhibits increased mechanical strength due to the reinforcing effect of the pigments. We're talking about tensile strengths reaching up to 1.5 gigapascals, which is significantly higher than traditional silk fibers. That's impressive. And the structural coloration adds to its optical properties? Exactly. The pigments form nanoscale structures that reflect specific wavelengths of light. By adjusting the concentration and distribution of pigments, we can tune the material to display different colors, blue at 450 nanometers, green at 520 nanometers, and so on. So we can create materials with vibrant, tunable colors without using synthetic dyes. That's environmentally friendly too. You've got it. Eliminating synthetic dyes reduces the environmental impact, making the process more sustainable. Plus, the use of renewable resources like silk and dandelions aligns with eco-friendly practices. Are there any unexpected properties that come from this integration? Yes, there are a few interesting ones. For instance, the composite material may exhibit self-healing properties. The dynamic interactions between the silk proteins and the pigments can allow the material to repair itself after minor damage. Self-healing? Like if it gets a small tear, it can mend itself? Precisely. It's similar to how our skin heals after a cut. The molecular interactions facilitate reformation of bonds, 
restoring the material's integrity over time. That's incredible. Any other unexpected properties? Another one is environmental responsiveness. The structural colors might change in response to stimuli like humidity or temperature. So the material could change color if the environment changes. Like a mood ring, but more advanced? Ha, yes, you could say that. This property could be useful in creating smart textiles that react to the environment or for sensing applications. What about any protective properties? Good point. The dandelion pigments may introduce UV protection due to their ability to absorb ultraviolet light. Additionally, some compounds found in dandelions have antimicrobial properties, which could make the material resistant to bacterial growth. So this material could protect against UV rays and bacteria? That's very useful for clothing and medical applications. Indeed. It opens up possibilities for a range of applications. For example, in smart textiles that not only look good, but also offer protection and adapt to the environment. What about the practical applications? Where do you see this material being used? There are several areas. Smart textiles, as we mentioned, could benefit from the material's strength, flexibility, and responsive coloration. Bio-inspired adhesives could utilize the self-healing properties. Eco-friendly coatings for surfaces could leverage the UV protection and antimicrobial features. It's exciting to think about. Do you think this material could replace some synthetic materials currently in use? Potentially, yes. The combination of natural, renewable resources and advanced functionalities makes it an attractive alternative to synthetic materials that may be less sustainable or have a larger environmental footprint. I imagine there might be challenges in scaling up the production of this material. Scaling up is always a consideration. However, because the process uses low temperature processing and readily available materials like silk and dandelions, it's more feasible than you might think. Optimization of the extraction and integration processes would be key. How did Psi Agents come up with this design? It seems quite innovative. Psi Agents is designed to explore vast knowledge graphs of scientific information, identifying novel connections and possibilities that might not be immediately apparent to us. By analyzing the properties of silk and dandelion pigments, it identified the potential benefits of integrating them. So it's using artificial intelligence to aid in scientific discovery. Exactly. It accelerates the discovery process by sifting through enormous amounts of data and suggesting innovative combinations and designs. In this case, it's helped us envision a new class of biomaterials. That's fascinating. Do you think AI will play a bigger role in material science in the future? I believe so. As materials become more complex and the demands for advanced functionalities increase, AI can help us navigate the vast design space more efficiently. It can propose ideas that we might not have considered otherwise. Going back to the material, how do they ensure that the pigments are uniformly distributed within the silk matrix? Uniform distribution is achieved through careful control of the processing conditions. By dissolving both the silk proteins and the pigments in solution and then casting them together, they can achieve a homogeneous mixture. Techniques like ultrasonic stirring can also help disperse the pigments evenly. Are there any challenges regarding the compatibility of silk proteins and dandelion pigments? Compatibility is an important consideration. Fortunately, both silk proteins and dandelion pigments are biocompatible and can interact through non-covalent bonds. However, optimizing the conditions to prevent aggregation of pigments and ensuring stable integration requires precise control over factors like pH and ionic strength. What role do modeling and simulation play in this research? Modeling and simulation are crucial. Molecular dynamics simulations help us understand how the silk proteins and pigments interact at the molecular level. Finite element analysis can simulate the mechanical behavior of the composite material. These tools allow us to optimize the material's properties before even synthesizing it in the lab. That's efficient. It saves time and resources. Indeed. It allows researchers to explore various configurations and processing conditions virtually, narrowing down the most promising approaches to test experimentally. Considering all that, what do you think are the next steps for this research? The next steps would involve scaling up the production process, testing the material's performance in real-world applications, and exploring other potential integrations. For instance, 
looking at other natural pigments or materials that could be combined with silk. Do you think there could be any ethical or environmental concerns with producing this material on a larger scale? As with any new technology, it's important to assess the environmental impact. Since the materials are biodegradable and the processing is energy efficient, the environmental concerns are minimal compared to traditional synthetic materials. Ethically, using natural resources responsibly is key, ensuring that harvesting dandelions or producing silk doesn't negatively impact ecosystems. That's good to hear. It seems like this material has a lot of potential benefits without significant downsides. Yes, it's promising. By harnessing the properties of natural materials in innovative ways, we can develop solutions that are both high-performing and sustainable. It's inspiring to see how something as simple as silk and dandelions can lead to advanced materials. Agreed. Sometimes the most elegant solutions come from looking at nature with a fresh perspective. There's a wealth of potential in the natural world that we're just beginning to tap into. I can't wait to see how this material evolves and what other innovations come from integrating biology and materials science. The intersection of biology and materials science is indeed a fertile ground for innovation. As we continue to learn from nature and apply that knowledge, we'll unlock new possibilities that could reshape various industries. Thank you for explaining all of this. I have a much better understanding now. My pleasure. Always happy to discuss exciting new developments. After all, science is all about curiosity and exploration. Before we wrap up, could you summarize the key points we've discussed? Certainly. We've talked about how Psy agents developed a novel material by integrating silk and dandelion pigments through low temperature processing. This material leverages silk's natural strength and hierarchical structure combined with the unique optical properties of dandelion pigments. The result is a composite with enhanced mechanical strength, vibrant structural colors, and potential additional functionalities like self-healing and UV protection. It's an example of how innovative integration of natural materials can lead to advanced, sustainable solutions. And the importance of preserving material integrity through low temperature processing, as well as the role of multi-scale organization in enhancing properties. Exactly. Those are critical factors in achieving the desired properties. It's a holistic approach that considers materials from the molecular level up to the macroscopic level. This conversation has been enlightening. I feel inspired to delve deeper into materials science. That's wonderful to hear. The field is ever evolving and there's always more to discover. Who knows, maybe you'll be part of the next big breakthrough. I hope so. Thank you again for your insights. Anytime. Remember, the key to advancement is staying curious and open to new ideas.